name's Tara Tucker and we're at the Rena Branston Gallery in San Francisco and my show is called Foreign Relations and it is a show of drawings and one large rug tapestry. This rug, I think it probably took me between two and three hundred hours to make and it's made uh, with the process of using a small hook that looks a lot like a crochet hook, only it's a little industrial strength looking. And I take each loop uh, singly by itself and pull it up through a linen backing. And so it's one huge piece of linen and I, I sit with a little frame in front of me and push and pull strips of cut and felted wool material. Um, all the wool material I cut and felted myself too. It's made with recycled wool clothing from thrift shops and uh, friends' bad sewing projects that went awry. <laughs> I put the title Foreign Relations in this rug because, uh, I, well, for two reasons. I really liked a traditional kind of rug making. Um, a lot of times they put names and dates and places and a title um, for each piece within the rug and the ideas about the subject matter that I have uh, is supposed to be a world without humans. Um, humans are gone, it's in the future, and animals and plants have to learn to coexist in order to survive in a new environment. And I like to think about a future without humans because it keeps, it keeps my mind kind of clear of of the different situations that I want to deal with. And I really like doing animals. I like to draw every hair. I like to make my work look almost photographic in a way without trying too hard to be absolutely perfect. Um, my family always had a lot of dogs and animals and, and I, I like to anthropomorphize <laughs> the animals a lot during my childhood. And also, I use a lot of white backgrounds for my drawings, or all white backgrounds for my drawings, because I grew up with my mother doing taxidermy as a kind of hobby. Um, and she was a second grade teacher, and she liked to bring the stuffed birds mostly into her classroom for her kids to look at. And so she would pick me up after school and I would go and help her be in the lab numbering bones or, or whatever they wanted me to do. And everything was so white and sterile and then there would be this gorgeous bird um, being taken apart or put back together. And just that gorgeousness of the lab really influenced how I like to center all the attention on the subject in my drawings with no background. And then you can really see completely in a clear way all the expression on the animals and the movement and the relationship without being caught up in any of the background detail. My name is Marcy Washington and the name of my show is called Dark Mirror. Um, I've been working on these paintings for the past um, almost a year. Um, it's kind of the next chapter in the story I've been piecing together. And these characters, I think of them as all um, living in the same house together. And the house is kind of this haunted space, haunted by um, a history that they don't, they only kind of know about or know about in pieces and fragments, um, but haunted by the ghosts of this past that they, that they don't really understand. This show focuses more on the two younger characters and their kind of initiation into knowing more about this world. Um, and I, I play a lot with ideas of cannibalism and vampirism, so I kind of think of it as their initiation into um, really um, partaking in those activities with the rest of the like family. Because I think of it like a family structure. Um, I, I got really um, into cannibalism as kind of an allegory for um, human relations and human social relations under capitalism. This kind of um, you're always feeding off of somebody else, and it's kind of like the basic tenets of capitalism say that that's okay. 
Um, and I think that like when you like kind of transfer that onto you know physical flesh and meat, it becomes a lot more apparent that it's not okay. Um, it's a lot clearer that those kind of relations aren't sustainable um, and aren't really the basis for any kind of free society. I actually work a lot from found imagery, um, specifically from fashion photography. Um, I like to find um, these moments in fashion photography where it seems like some kind of crisis is kind of oozing around the image, oozing around the edges of the image, where something is going from this like hyper glamorized unreality to kind of this sordid, gross, more realistic thing that I can feel, you know, especially in the way sometimes body parts will look almost broken or deformed. Um, so I like to draw from those a lot, but I, taking that, that body and that person and kind of casting it into my own story, um, which then casting into my story really lets what's coming, creeping around the edges really come forward, kind of like burst over the image. Um, like where I can, like, like an image where, you know, like something where, you know, where they look really like decrepit and then I can like, vision, I can make the blood come, that, the blood that I see when, when I'm looking at that image, I can make it come or cast it into the story. My biggest um, inspiration is probably the gothic novel and I, when I started this series I really set out to make paintings that looked like illustrations for a novel that didn't exist. And so I think like the pictorial forms of the gothic novel, I, I think of um, like one of my favorite books is Jane Eyre and I have a copy of Jane Eyre that just has um, in like really critical parts of the story there'll be one illustration that kind of sums up the whole, you know, everything that came before and a little bit after, you know, one illustration that's kind of that iconic of the emotional state of, um, of the chapter or whatever. So I think of like each painting as being kind of like the iconic illustration for that point in the story. Yeah. And the way even like going like the history of those illustrations, the way they tie into like um, romantic landscape traditions and the way that the landscape is always reflective of the emotional state of the characters in the story. I really enjoy that. And I really enjoy, um, I, the work that I enjoy looking at most is work that I know I, I know it takes people a really long time. I love seeing like the hand and the dedication and I love work that seems obsessive. 